I want to think about now, we've got to the end of integration, or in terms of how do we integrate particular functions. I want us to try and write down as many things that we could possibly do that would help us to integrate something that we should be thinking of as a mental checklist. What are some of the techniques that we can do um, for integrating? Any suggestions? So substitution. So substitution is going to be one of the techniques that we're going to need to think about. What other kind of things could we possibly do with different uh, with integration? By parts. We could do integration by parts. When we think of integration by parts, um, can you tell me anything extra that we normally need to remember about integration by parts? Yeah? Yeah, what's the priority that we, we need to concern ourselves with for A-level maths? Yeah, so ln x, ln x takes priority for u. And then after that, it would be just the algebraic terms like x, x squared, x cubed, all of that kind of stuff. OK, what other kind of things could we do? What's probably the most common one with integration? Pardon? Reverse chain rule. Now, I've said with the reverse chain rule, I've probably estimated about 60 or 65% of the time it's going to be a reverse chain rule, I think. It's often that, and people rack their brains thinking, could it be this, could it be that, could it be substitution? It's probably going to be reverse chain rule. What other kinds of things have we done? You can either have a look through your notes if you want to. Put in. Good, we could do partial fractions. What else? Right hand? Yeah, we could just do the standard results. And when I say by standard results, it might be something like the integral of sex squared x with respect to x. We just need to know off by heart that that would be tan x plus c. So I've put something here that's to do with trigonometry. What might we be able to do with some trigonometry ones? I'll use the trig identities. Good. We could use the trig identities. Might not necessarily help. But using trig identities could be helpful as well. There's still some things here that we've got missing that we need to know how to do. We haven't done parametric is not really going to be any different to any of these things that we've got on the board here. Areas under the graph. Areas under the graph isn't, I don't think it's necessarily going to help us with doing like the technique of the integration. It is one of those skills that we looked at. Um, no other suggestions? Pardon? We've got substitution at the top. Yeah, I guess it kind of comes under the standard results. So if you're doing something like that we know if it was like, um, I don't know, f of ax plus b, where it just will be 1 over a, whatever you expected it to be. That was one of the earlier bits that we did. So that still comes under the sort of standard results idea. There's one thing here that I definitely think that we can, well, we've done explicitly here. I'll start writing it down. Uh, that would be as a trig one. Polynomial division. division. Did that towards the end about skill number nine or ten? Well, sort of. Yeah, sort of. But sometimes you might not have something that you can do partial fractions, but you can do polynomial division with. Um, and I suppose there's one thing here that was on your memory page. I'm going to pull up the memory page in a second. That is actually, you could just split the numerator. OK, you could potentially just split the numerator there and see what happens. So these are all of the different things that we've got here. I would say the most important one that you should always be looking out for is the reverse chain rule. OK, the reverse chain rule is one that you should be looking out for. Um, integration by parts, you can pretty much tell when it's integration by parts. What does it usually look like if it's integration by parts? What might it look like if it's integration by parts? Might look like, it will look like a product. It will often look like a product. Remember, though, products can be the reverse chain rule. So integration by parts, this may look like a product. There's one time when it doesn't look like a product. When does it not look like a product for integration by parts? Very unique case. If you, get, oh, if you integrate ln x. You have to use integration by parts. But one of the things is a 1. Remember, it was 1 times ln x. Okay? 
So I'm going to pull up this memory page that I created for you guys. The bit that I'm interested in, though, is the bottom half of the page here. So we've got these bits I wanted to think about. OK, so we've got substitution of some of the things that we can do. So what do you mean by one and one LNX? Well, if you wanted to integrate LNX, this would require um, integration by parts, where you would take u as LNX oh, okay. and v dash as 1. Okay, so it, integration by parts always looks like a product unless you're integrating LNX. So if we just come back to this document that I created for you before. These are the different sorts of things you should be thinking about um, on top of some of them. So I've written here, split the numerator. This is what I mean by split the numerator. If you have a numerator like this, you can split it into two separate things so that it becomes easier to integrate as separate pieces. The reverse chain rule, I've put two different kinds of things that we've got here. Um, what kind of thing do we think this would be integrating to? What, what kind of function do we think it would be integrating to? LN. It's going to be an LN function, because the numerator is the derivative of the denominator. And what kind of function do you think this would be integrating to? That's just a sine to the power of? Five. It's going to be a sine to the power of 5, some kind of thing like that, because cos is the derivative of sine. These would require partial fractions. This one you've got to be careful with because it doesn't look like partial fractions yet. You'd need to factorize the denominator. And then these ones will be some kind of algebraic division. And then you may use partial fractions, or you may be able to go straight into that kind of integration. Okay. So on the very last page of your booklet, you should have something that looks a bit like this. And I want to spend some of the first half hour of today's lesson thinking about these different questions that we have got here. Okay. Now, I'm just going to ask, I'm going to give you a minute, 30 seconds. I just don't want you to go from necessarily question one onwards. I want you just to have a look at some of the questions that we've got here. And on your tables, I want you to say, oh, I think question number nine, you would do this. Oh, I think question number four, you would do this kind of thing. So I'm just going to give you a minute, pick out a few different questions, see if you can make some decisions about what you would do for these questions. And then we'll quickly go through a few of them, and then we'll do some practice on the whiteboard. So I'll give you about a minute to try and decide. I want to hear you talking about this on your tables. What techniques might you use here? OK, off you go. Okay, 20 seconds more. Five, four, three, two, one. 
Okay, hopefully, it's actually kind of fun looking at them and thinking, what would I do with this? Like, I actually, from a teacher's point of view, I really enjoyed like listening to everyone was like, oh, I think it could be this, it could be that. Like, it's actually quite nice to hear. So if you can try and find some enjoyment in this, integration will be a little bit less stressful. So um, Sufian, can you tell me any of these questions and what you think the technique might be? And we're not going to do the question, I just want to know what the technique might be. Yeah, this is just going to be a standard result. And I think this is a bit like the question that um, Hamza said earlier, like, oh, is it the one that's like, is it going to integrate to 1 over a when you've got your f of, a, f of um, ax plus b, that kind of one that we did right at the beginning, because we've got that 3 in front of the x. We know there's <coughs> going to be a, a third that's coming up. Um, Sadia, which question did you talk about with Ronak? <coughs> Yep, I agree. This one looks like it's going to be some kind of partial fractions question. What would you need to be careful of when you do partial fractions for this one? <coughs> Ronak? Yeah, how would you deal with this x minus 1 squared? So you have one of them that has x minus 1 and the other one has x minus 1. Okay, you have one with x minus 1 and one with x minus 1 squared. We call that a repeated linear factor. So you're going to have actually three separate pieces here. I'm imagining there's probably going to be some LNs. There's probably going to be some other things like that when it gets integrated as well. Muhi, have you got any ideas for any of the other questions about how we might integrate them? Uh, number three, do we use partial fractions? Um, I'm not sure if we would use partial fractions for that one. How would you use partial fractions for that? There's always something we should check before we go to doing something like partial fractions. It's a reverse chain rule. Now, just because it's a top and the bottom does not mean this is necessarily going to be ln, OK? Because if you were going to rewrite this, you've got 2x plus 1 x squared plus x minus 1 to the minus 2. So you actually can you would actually integrate that. And what you should notice is 2x plus 1 is the derivative of this thing. So it's going to be something, you know, when we do our consider then scale, it's probably going to be x squared plus x minus 1 to the power of minus 1. And then we'll differentiate that and see how we need to scale it. So that's a reverse chain rule. Remember, do not forget. Don't leave reverse chain rule out. It's an important one. Ruhan, can you tell me another question and what you think its technique would be? Number seven, yeah? Um, I think you're going to make your life too difficult if you do substitution with that. I think that one, you can make it easier than... You can do a standard result. Because this bit inside here is linear. Because the derivative of that linear bit is just a constant term, so you can just scale that. If it was this, if it was 2x squared minus 3, you would require some kind of substitution. But it's actually one of the standard results where you've just got an f of ax plus b. Um, who else can I ask? Hamza? 9 would be parts. 9 would be by parts. Good. And obviously, we would lnx would take the priority. For you, other Hamza. Um, cos of two x will be standard result. Okay, go on, do a harder one than that, please. Cos of two x is going to be a standard result, obviously. <coughs> uh, Eleven is. My part. Consider from the. What do we call that rule? Uh, no. Oh, no. We've, we've got this. Good. Can you just explain to everyone why this is the reverse chain rule? Um, you can see the integral of the power of e is similar to x plus 1. The derivative of the power of e is yeah. similar to that. You said the integral. So yeah, you'd have 2x plus 2, but we've got x plus 1. So they're similar to each other they're by a factor. So you would be able to integrate that using the reverse chain rule. Anyone who I, I don't want to pick anyone. Anyone can volunteer a different number and, and what they think the technique would be. 13 is going to be by parts, good. And obviously, you would take this as your value for u. Very good. We can know when you do part. How many times do you think you'd have to do parts for this? You're going to have to do parts twice for this because you've got an x squared. First time, you'd get an x. Second time, it would, you'd, get an, you'd get just the, the trig bit. 
Come on, some other suggestions before you go up to the board. You make, you're going to make your life easier. If you have a guess now, you'll know how you can do it on the boards. Muzakir and then Muhi. The 12 involves trigonometric identity. Ooh, now I've looked at 12 just now, and I was thinking, I'm not really sure what we're going to do with number 12. Um, it probably could be some kind of trig identities. Um, I think, actually, I've got an idea here. Yeah, I have got an idea. It's not going to be a trig identity. Well, you oh, we don't want you know, we can't square something when we're integrating it, because then we're integrating something completely different. Um, no, because isn't the top bit similar to the derivative of the bottom bit? So it'd be just normal Exactly. <laughs> it's the reverse chain rule. Because if you think about differentiating this bottom bit, sine differentiates to cos, cos differentiates to minus sine. So it's nearly differentiated to the top, apart from everything has been multiplied by minus 1. So it's going to be in what kind of thing do we think it's going to differ uh, integrate to if this is the derivative of this? Careful. What is it when the top is the derivative of the bottom? What kind of function does it integrate to? Pardon? Oh, yeah. Ln. So it's going to be an ln of sine x plus cos x, but with a minus in front of it. So then it'd be 1 over? 1 over sine x plus, ln of 1 over sine x plus cos x. Did, is that the one you were going to tell me about, Muhi? Any other ones we can talk about before I send you off to the boards to do these? Pardon? <laughs> what about 10? 10 comes after 9 and before 11. <laughs> not parts, you don't mean parts. I think this is going to be, I, I think, I think the bottom can be factorised. If the bottom can't be factorised, that goes into further maths and it will become a complete the square and then it integrates into a different way. Okay, but that's, I'm just mentioning that because I can see a few people here who will have to integrate that kind of stuff. Look, we've basically done the whole board there. There's question 14. I'm going to leave question 14, but I'd like to see if anyone can have a go at doing question 14. Any suggestions of what you think you could do for question 14? We've got sine cubed of 2x. You can't just say random things and hope that I'm going to then say, yes, it's correct, guys. <laughs> it's not can't be standard. You can't do a standard result here. It is not allowed to do a standard result. Bef before you answer that, Ruhan, could you tell me why you cannot do a standard result for 14? Because if, if it was assigned to the power of 4, when you differentiate that, you'd get a cos, wouldn't you? Because of the chain rule. So there's no cos there, so it can't be a standard result. What do you think you'd need to do, Ruhan? Um, split up into sine um, cubed and then sine squared cubed, and then change the sine squared cubed to 1 minus cos squared. He's got it. So it's going to be an identity, OK? He's going to split the sine cubed into a sine and a sine squared. He's going to change the sine squared into a 1 minus cos squared. Because remember, you always want to get a mixture of sine and cos to be able to get a reverse chain rule going on there. Right, so we're going to go to the boards. I'm going to leave this up on the board here. Everybody's up and doing these. Um, you can do them in order if you want to. You can do them whichever order you want. Um, we're going to do this for about 25 minutes, OK? Off we go, guys. <laughs>